Namaskar. Welcome to the session on development of road transport in India. Dear viewers, we will be discussing this topic under the following five subheadings. Introduction, Transport in Ancient India, Importance of Road Transport in India, Classification of Roads and Technology and Road Development. Introduction, Travelling has been the basic instinct in man. Man has been moving from place to place in search of food since the time immemorial. Even during the prehistoric period, man was moving from place to place mainly in search of food and for hunting. Travel in the prehistoric period that is 30,000 BCE to 10,000 BCE suggests that movement of people revolved around day-to-day -day survival. The search for basic needs of life that is water, food, shelter and safety kept the man moving from place to place. The history of broad transport is truly very elaborate. This journey began with the Pagdandis. It means a small path created naturally due to frequent walk by man of earlier times. Since that time, the history of road development is truly interesting. Dating back to Vedic civilization, in Atharva Veda, we can find references to road construction as well as information about the precautions to be taken. Kautilya's Arthashastra also mentions about the mechanism of roads for chariots and stresses upon the traffic rules and road safety. The system of road transport was actually developed even during ancient civilization like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro periods. These are evident from the cave paintings on the walls of excavated sites. During and around Bronze Age, to be specific during the period of our great epics like Ramayana and Mahabharata, there were roads for movement of chariots drawn by two or more horses. In early Vedic period, from 1500 BCE to 900 BCE, boats were described as dugouts with oars of paddling. They were used mainly for inland waterways. There are evidences about Indus Valley civilization establishing trade contact with Mesopotamia and Egypt. Transport system in ancient India. The traditional means of transport in the ancient India were as follows. Walking. In ancient times, man walked hundreds of miles on foot only. Walking was very common phenomenon. Many people from South India walked to the holy town Varanasi. Even Adi Shankaracharya travelled all over India by walking only. Bullock carts. Bullock carts were the chief means of transportation on land. The cart was pulled either by one or two oxen. In some places, the cart was also pulled by other animals like camel, yoke, elephant, etc. Chariots As kingdom grew, the rulers started using horse-driven chariots. Later, horse-driven carriages were mainly used by rich people and the rulers were using chariots. Though good roads were mentioned in Vedic period, little evidences are available. In 5th century BCE, more advanced system of roads and bridges, crossways and four-road junction were developed. Palaquin. It is also known as palkis or dolis. They were one of the luxurious transport system used by rich and noble men for travelling. This was primarily used for deities during festivals. With the development of trade and commerce, many towns developed like Vaishali, Varanasi, Kurukshetra, Ujjaini, etc. As a matter of fact, Ujjaini, the capital of Avanti, was an important trade centre in ancient India. Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador in the Mauryan court, 
records that there were good roads with trees on both sides for shades during that period. He records that there was Rajamarga, something like present day national highway, were constructed during Mauryan periods. The Grand Trunk roads were built during those days by Mauryans. Infrastructure like caravans, sarais, dharmashalas were common during that period. Wells were dug and trees were planted to provide shade to travelers. According to available records, during the Gupta era, there were good roads and road connection were constructed to link South India. The Mughal era was the golden era for roads. After the Europeans came to India, they developed roads only in those areas where they were interested in trade and commerce. However, real road development started after independence. The independent India realized that roads are the prerequisites for the economic development of the country. A good road network constitutes the basic infrastructure that accelerates the economic development of the country. It established connectivity even to the most backward region so that the region starts developing, thereby providing enough employment to the local people. Road development and proper connectivity is required not only for the development industries but even for the agriculture, roads are very essential. Besides, roads have an important role in national integration by bringing people together. After independence, there has been a tremendous increase in the road traffic in India. Construction and maintenance of roads creates huge employment opportunities, particularly for semi-skilled and unskilled workers. India has world's third largest road network. Now next coming to the importance of road transport in India. India has the second largest road network in the world at 4.7 million kilometers. The road network transport more than 60% of goods in the country and 85% of the passenger traffic. The road transport industry in India has emerged as the dominant part of inland transport system. However, the industry is finding it increasingly difficult to meet ever increasing demand for roads. This may be partly due to the inadequacies of the road network, which if expanded and upgraded, could go a long way in promoting efficient transport system. Part of the problem also lies in the inability of service organizations, particularly in the public sector to deliver efficient service. The road transport system in India has come to occupy a pivotal role in the overall transport system in India. Over the past five decades, the share of road transport in overall traffic Flows has been continuously increasing with a substantial shift from railways to roadways. Road transport system at present carries about 85% in passenger transport and 60% in freight transport. Despite such impressively growth, it is increasingly being recognized that there is a wide gap between the demand for and the supply of road transport services both from qualitative and quantitative perspective. In the initial phases of development of any economy, the transport requirements tend to increase at a rate considerably higher than the rate of growth of economy. This has been the case in India too. For example, during the period 1950 to 51 and 1964 to 65, rail freight traffic increased nearly by two and a half times whereas traffic by road is estimated to have increased by five times in case of passenger traffic, road traffic increased by three times during the same period. During this period, the national income has grown by 50% only. Considering the ever increasing demand for road passenger traffic, there is obviously a need to expand capacity. With the state transport undertaking facing an acute shortage of resources to keep their fleet intact, let alone provide for expansion, 
An emerging idea is that the private sector should be given a more significant role, especially when the economy is being liberalized. Studies relating to deregulation and privatization of urban bus transport services in the country have shown that in most cases, public have been benefited to considerable extent. Road freight operation in India have almost been in the hands of private operators. The important legislation regulating the industry has been upgraded in 1988. The amended act by its various provisions appears to recognize the potential of the industry as an essential ingredient of the social and economic infrastructure rather than support the earlier predominant view that the industry only needed to be supervised and controlled. Though such a perspective provides for a more liberal policy framework and at the same time strengthens regulatory mechanism, the implementation needs to be qualitatively monitored. Sale of automobiles and movement of goods transportation by roads have gradually increased over the years with the improvement in connectivity between cities and towns and villages in the country. India is a vast country with rural background. Although urbanization is fast changing the Indian economy, but still it is predominantly agricultural based economy. Railways cannot reach every corner of the country. Road transport system has got the following advantages. It is very flexible. Roads can reach every nook and corner of the country, whereas for railways, it cannot reach all parts of the country. Roads construction can create large employment opportunity, particularly in rural areas, which can significantly contribute considerable percentage towards the GDP of the country. Road construction and maintenance requires huge unskilled and semi-skilled labor, which are abundantly available in rural areas. Next is door-to-door -door service. Door-to-door -door services are possible in case of road transport. For transporting goods as well as passengers from any part of the country, roads are very convenient. Railways have fixed routes and they cannot reach all parts of the country. However, roads are complementary to railway system. From interior places, road transport system can bring passengers and goods up to the railway station which can carry further to longer distance. Rural Development Rural economy basically depends upon a good transport system. A good road system is the backbone for the rural economy. For transporting the agricultural produce to the marketplace, and bringing the agricultural input to the farmer's place, a good road transport system is a prerequisite. Emergencies. In times of crisis, either due to natural calamity or in times of war, roads are very important. Troops are moved from one place to another by roads when it is short distance. In case of natural calamities, providing relief to the affected people or moving the locals to safe places a good road system is very important. Next is about the classification of roads. For the purpose of proper development and maintenance of roads, roads in India have been classified into the following categories. National highways. These are the roads connecting two or more big cities, either within the state or between two or more states. It also connects port towns, industrial centers and other commercial centers. The National Highway Authority was constituted by an Act of Parliament in the year 1988. It is the responsibility of National Highway Authority to maintain and manage all national highways in India. They have also developed another concept that is expressway. It is either six lane or eight lane roads, but its entry and exit are controlled. In total, there are about 1500 kilometer expressways in India at the end of 2015. The total length of national highways is more than one lakh kilometers. There are also toll roads constructed and operated both by public and private sectors. 
tall concept was first started in India in 1997 providing logistic service. Since then, we have built extensive network across the country including distribution in key locations. Next, let us learn about the Golden Quadrilateral Road Project. It is the largest highway project completed in India. It is also fifth largest highway project in the world. The project was launched by 2001 by NDA government headed by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the 10th Prime Minister of India. The overall length of this road is 5,846 kilometers connecting four metropolitan cities of India namely New Delhi, Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata. The project consisted of constructing or expanding four or six lane highways or express highways. This project was entrusted to National Highway Authority of India. State Highways These roads are constructed and maintained by the concerned state government. These roads connect the state capitals with district headquarters and other important towns and cities within the state. These roads also connect national highways. In the last three decades, the length of the state highways have doubled in India. Although the construction and maintenance of the state highways are the responsibilities of the concerned state governments, yet the central government assists these projects from Central Road Fund. Further to promote national integration and interstate facilities and to assist the state government in their economic development, through construction of roads and bridges, central government provides 50% of the project cost from central road fund for roads which are very important for the economic development of the region. District roads. These roads join district headquarters with smaller towns and other important places within the district. Development and maintenance of these roads are the responsibility of concerned Zilla Panchayat. The state government may also give some grants in certain cases. Village roads. The construction and maintenance of these roads are mainly the responsibilities of the concerned village panchayat. Most of these roads are dusty and muddy. They are not fit for vehicles during rainy seasons. Border roads. Border road organization was set up in 1960 for accelerating economic development and for movement of troops in the border areas. This organization has constructed roads mostly in northern and northeastern states. Border area organization has constructed world's highest road joining Chandigarh with Manali in Himachal Pradesh. Pradhana Mantri Grama Sadak Yojana PMGSY This program was launched by the government of India on 25th November 2000 under the NDA government headed by Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee. The primary objectives were to provide connectivity to unconnected habitations as a part of poverty reduction program. The government of India is planning to set high and uniform technical and management standard and facilitating policy development. The planning is to start at the state level to ensure sustainable management of rural roads network. These roads have to be built with a minimum population of 500 or more in plains and 250 or more in hill states, tribal district and desert areas. This scheme is fully sponsored by the central government. The roads built under the PMGSY are required to meet the technical specifications and geometric design standard as specified in Rural Road Manual which is specifically brought out in 2002 by the Indian Road Congress. All PMGSY are also covered by five years maintenance contract by the contractor who has taken the construction work as per the standard bidding document. It is supposed to cover 1.78 lakhs habitations. It includes road constructions as well as updation. This involves 3.71 lakh kilometers of roads for new connectivity and 3.68 lakh kilometer of roads upgraded. Since its inception, PMGSY has provided connectivity over 4,66,000 km, including upgradation at a total cost of 1,42,000 crores as on January 2016. PMGSY 
represents a rare public program that qualifies as a success in terms of both equity and efficiency objectives. The latter is measurable by way of connectivity targets achieved, which is being reasonably met. It has also fulfilled its obligation of assets creations in rural areas. The biggest impact has been the productivity. Hitherto isolated places became part of the larger cluster of 200 to 250 villages with a total population of 50,000 to 1 lakh people as against 1,000 to 2,000 earlier. This allows for economies of scale, specialization and flourishing of micro-enterprise. It has made possible quick transportation of perishable producers like milk, vegetables, fish to a wider market areas where the producer can get a reasonable price for his produce. The most important factor behind the success of PMGSY is that it did not suffer due to lack of funds as it is fully sponsored by the central government. However, during 2009 to 14, this project was not given full attention by the UPA2 government. However, the current NDA government headed by Sri Narendra Modi has put the project back on track and during the current year's budget 2016-17, a total sum of 27,000 crore rupees was allocated and the target is about 45,000 kilometers, both construction and upgradation plan to be covered during the current year. Now coming to technology and road development. It has been well established that road user costs are significantly influenced by the payment quality. This brings into focus the desirability of optimizing pavement investment in the overall interest of minimizing total transportation cost in the long run. Experts' emphasis is on the need for optimal investment in the road durability, which would produce thicker pavements and would result in longer life of the road, benefiting the country in the long run. It is in this context that the role of rigid pavement technology based of different types of concrete becomes very significant. The changing relative price structure of bitumen and cement would result in the longer life of the roads. Total road cost concept which considers construction costs and maintenance costs over the design tend to render cement concrete roads viable. However, the inherent structural characteristics of such roads require that they are built to proper structural standards and appropriate maintenance standards are followed. There have been good scope of use of four lanes of national highways and on expressways. The compulsion for technological change in the automobile industry in India became necessary only when the market became more competitive in the early 80s. Until this time, the different strategies mainly related to modernization, scale, production process, etc., which did not affect costs and thereby had no effect in market share of different firms. This has led to delay in the introduction of new and more efficient technologies, although individual manufacturers updated their product line from time to time through limited research and development efforts. Some of the technological improvements that have resulted from foreign collaborative ventures or indigenous efforts in recent times include fuel efficient, weight effective, high performance engines, modern aerodynamic caps, improved suspension system, etc. To increase the payload capacity of the vehicles so that fuel consumption per ton kilometer is reduced, the use of multi-axle vehicles and tractor trailers need to be introduced in a significant way. This would bring about a change in the composition of the commercial vehicle population that consists of mainly two axle vehicles. Although after independence sufficient road construction has been undertaken, but still there is need for further improvement of road networks in India. Thank you.